Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining us and uh, I've got something I want to show you under this tarp. So let's take it off. Ha -ha! I've just had um, five leech treadle wheels made and uh, I've actually already sold two of them but I've got these three here and I just wanted you to to see them So I'll take the camera off the tripod and we'll get, I'll show you them up close just They're beautifully made uh, Here in our locality, well actually about 30 miles from here, a place called Allensville here in central Pennsylvania and um, In fact they're made by an Amish craftsman and um, they are beautiful to behold. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got these little bungs that go here for the to drain the water out. Just put those in. So, yeah, he's done a good job of these. These actually, this batch is, uh, we've improved it. They've got the stainless steel liner on the inside, the aluminium wheel head with, with bat pins. And um, yeah, in fact, the wheel, for those of you who don't know, this particular wheel was designed in England by my uncle Dickon Nance down at St. Ives in Cornwall. And um, it's really based on a a design of an old Cornish pumping engine. Um, uh, anyway, these ones are made of uh, maple. Here, the frame is maple. These are all mortise and tenon together and then bolted with long bolts that go right through to about here that pull the whole thing together. It's extremely rigid. There's no flexing in it at all. So the frame is um, maple and the, the slops tray up here and the seat are cherry. And then we have some walnut capping here along the, along the top. The flywheel itself, the flywheel is actually hollow. It's made of mar marine ply and it's a uh, hollow construction. It has four compartments which allow you to add ballast to it. Um, you must be careful, of course, that you add the same amount of ballast into each compartment. It's very sturdily made. As you can see, the, the metalwork and everything is very is sturdy, beefy. You have a, a leather strap here that goes around the, the shaft here, the crankshaft, the offset shaft. It has a grease nipple there, another one here. 
It's also got grease nipples up, up underneath, up there for the top bearing and also one down underneath for the lower bearing. Yeah, I mean every time he makes these for me they they always they're always different, you know, because well, it's the nature of wood, isn't it? Wood is always it's like that, you know, you get different grain. Different grain shows off a different different character. Oh yeah, what I wanted to show you was We've got these guys here, you see, so... Hang on, let me just put the camera down here a minute, if I'm not being too crazy. Let me just stick this, find the hole, and I'll give this a... Give that a turn, you see, like that, and then... That's the the wheel head, and you've got a shaft there. You can see plenty of depth there, the collar to stop the slops going over the, um, and down into the bearing. So, let's put that down again, hang on, do it up. There it is. So each one of these wheels will will have one of these. So this wheel, um, in fact, it's a, it's adjustable. You can see here on the chain. You un unhook it here, and also down below here, there's a collar. You see. That collar has got a, like a uh, like a grub screw, so that collar is raised as well. So you can raise raise it here on the shaft, raise it here on the chain, and you raise it here on this um, on this pivot point here. You can you can raise this up and down according to your leg length. You see. So. Yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd show them to you. And if you know of anybody who is, would, might be interested in one of these, one of these leech treadle wheels, then if you go to my website, simonleechpottery.com, you will find their information about about the wheel um, etc actually these wheels I funnily enough I actually had somebody uh, write to me today from from Australia interested in wanting to buy one and but I'm, I'm not really interested in shipping to Australia because it's just such a hassle you know getting it crated up and all the rest of it uh, so I'm these are actually just for pickup only. So if you want it, you're going to have to come and pick it up. So, well, the wind is getting up. I think it's incredibly warm, humid day here today. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have a, a, a storm uh, before too long. I just feel that breeze is getting stronger. Okay, folks, well, thanks for joining us. I uh, uh, hope you like the wheels. If you have any questions about them, please write to me. Um, sometimes people ask me whether it would be a good wheel for an outright beginner. Uh, I think probably... I would say, yeah, you could. It, it just depends on, on your aptitude, really. You know, like in all things people who do pottery, 
who start pottery, there are some people who are naturally more talented than others. Now somebody who's very naturally talented wouldn't have a problem with one of these wheels. Somebody who was perhaps not so naturally talented might find that they are a bit of a struggle because they're trying to concentrate on trying to kick the wheel as well as making the pot. And that might be, for some people, too much. Um, other people ask me, well, are they any good for making big pots? Well, I wouldn't say they are really good for making big pots. Um, yes, you can make two-piece pots on it, or three-piece pots, or add, add sections. Yes, you can do that, but as all, you know, most kick wheels uh, for making very big pots, uh, I might find that having a motor is actually you're better off with a, an electric wheel. But for most things, I mean, I use these wheels. Uh, like, say, for example, if I was going to sit down and make some coffee mugs, or some tankards, or some pitchers, I wouldn't hesitate to to make them on one of these wheels because they're great wheels for repeat throwing. You very much become part of the wheel because you are the vital link, as it were, uh, because you are the motor. So, um, you become very attached to the wheel in, in more ways than one. Um, they're definitely an acquired taste. Um, they're much, you, you're able to make, I think, much more contemplative kind of pots on this kind of wheel than on an electric wheel. You cannot make, I don't think, uh, with the same degree of feeling on an electric wheel as you can on one of these. Whether it's not necessarily these wheels, but I'm talking about uh, foot-operated wheels. So they they're, they're very they're very good for that. Of course, they're dear to my heart because um, I grew up as a child in a pottery, and I uh, always saw people working on on wheels. Oh, here comes the neighbour's dog. <laughs> Here, Casey. Come on, then. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm making a movie. I'm telling every, showing everybody these beautiful handmade wheels. That's a that's a bike to ride. That's better than any Honda. <laughs> it doesn't have carburetor problems. <laughs> Come on, Casey. No motor, no. Casey, we are we are the motor, aren't we? Casey. Bang him. <laughs> come on. Anyway, uh, yeah, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com and um, as always, keep practicing, and that is the secret. Um, to keep practicing because it's only as you practice are you really gonna be able to hone your skills and um, improve uh, in this craft. You find that most crafts you really need uh, practice. You do need to practice. Thank you Joy. So, um, I guess that wraps it up. Hey, take care, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Dee 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 dee.